and your day-to-day -day life, do you use violence to solve your personal problems? No. No. And the second question would be, <laughs> uh, would you consider it then wrong and immoral to initiate force? I'll say yes, yes, right? yes, yes. Yeah. And then the last question would be, would you also therefore consider it wrong and immoral to violently force your ideas onto other people? Yes. Perfect, beautiful. Just tell me your day-to-day -day life, you have a plurality of non-violent solutions you apply and use to solve your problems. And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, though, we're told the only way we can affect any kind of change or make any difference, though, is through government, politics, vote, they say, right? So people vote with their ideas, opinions, and preferences, and how best to solve that community problem. And in effect, they elect a politician. That politician, his early job is to legislate those ideas and opinions into law, and then those laws of opinions are then backed and enforced by the police at gunpoint, right? You had, like, 420 was celebrating this a few days ago, right? The government opinion that cannabis is bad for you. If I were to smoke a plant, I'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown into a cage, a prison. At which point, well, any point, be kidnapped. What would you call if I were to grab you uh, against her consent, uh, against her will? Kidnapped, okay, right? but what would you call it if a, if a guy pulled out a gun in public with a, and a policeman was there and a policeman but he's, took he's, him he, into custody? But he's violating consent. Okay, but it still would be the same arrest. It would still be the same procedure to, but, to but, arrest but, him and but, take him into custody. But, but there's a victim there, right? The person is threatening someone, there's a victim involved. Who is the victim when I smoke a plant? Okay, yeah, but I'm saying uh, arresting somebody, you can't call arresting somebody kidnapping. It's still arresting them. It, it might be, it might be, it might be. All right, all right, let me ask you then. Is it, um, then, let me ask you, if, if I were, if you're smoking a plant right now, right, and if I were to grab you, uh, you will consider that kidnapping. Yeah, but you're not a police officer. All right, okay, okay. Now, now if I were to wear a blue costume, and then grab you, then that will be okay. You're still not a police officer. What makes a police officer? A blue costume and a piece of metal, right? A title, I mean, they're a, a title. police officer. So if, if, so if I call myself a police officer. You can't just be, you can't just decide to put on a police costume and be a police officer. It's a costume, right, so I can no, wear a costume. No, no, you have to go to the academy, you have to be, you have to be, you have to be initiated, a, you have to be. For strangers that you've never met, wear a blue costume, right, and call this yeah, a police yeah. officer, and you're minding your own business, and there's no victim when you smoke a plant, right? And because okay. of that, right, so I'm, I'm just trying to say it has to be universal, regardless of who you okay, are, what title the cops, you are. but the cops are just enforcing the laws. The right, problem I get, is I the get laws. That. I, the cops are doing right, their right, jobs. Right, right, right. I get all that, too. They're not kidnappers. We'll, we'll, get, we'll, get, all, we'll, get, we'll get all to that. If they, if they arrest somebody for pissing on a tree over there, if, that's well, not a kidnapping. The, the, the scenario I'm using, if I were to smoke a plant, though, I don't know these people, I would be kidnapped, arrested. Yeah, you would be arrested. You may call it arrested. I will call it for what it is. I don't know these people. I'm, there's a victimless crime. I mean, crime. you should probably look up the definition for kidnapping because I don't think that's what a cop kidnapping. does to you. Uh, a kidnapping is probably like a, a citizen just abducting another citizen against their will. Okay. Like, that's not... Against their will. Police officers are not citizens. Are they're, they're not citizens. They're, 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 Define a they're citizen. employees of the state. Like their their All their job is to enforce the law. So if the law is that you can't smoke pot and they see you smoking pot, then their job is to take you into custody. They're not kidnappers. They're not criminals for doing that. The real criminals are the people making All right, those so laws. Criminals. All right. So who who is the victim? Um, the, when well, someone smokes a plant. Well, there's no victim, but that doesn't so mean. That, are, so that why doesn't, are they enforcing opinions in which there are no crimes? Because committed? they're enforcing victimless crimes, which is fucking stupid. Is but stupid, that has right? nothing to do with the police. But, officers. but if you want to get to truth, and so we have to call these out for what it is, it is a victimless crime. Okay, but right? that has nothing to do with the people enforcing it. That's their jobs. I'm, I'm just showing how government works. I know right? how it any, works. Any opinion yeah, it's is back. Stupid. Yeah, it is fucking stupid. Right, right. Stupid. And, and that's how we're that's how we're going to get to this conversation. How government is immoral, right? Yeah. If I were to smoke a plant, right? You may call it arrested. I will call it kidnapping. Okay. okay, you can if you right, want, right. I guess. I'll, I'll, yeah, okay, so there's no disagreement. There is someone taking me against my will for a victimless crime. I will call okay, it but a... if some guy ran in here with, like, an AK-47 and started opening fire and the cops came, would you be, would you want you the think cops to kidnap you, 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 him? Do you think it's only the cops that will be defending these people? There's people walking around here who are armed, too, right? So yeah, you're yeah. isn't just on cops, Okay, right? of course. And we're, we're, we consider it wrong and immoral to initiate force. The guy with the AK-47 opened a fire. Yeah. Right, initiate. Of you course. can defend yourself. Defending yourself is not the initiation of force. Okay, right? that's fine. So it's, you're not violating his consent. Okay, but what if what if what if there's a uh, there's like um, there's some terrorists that are planning on doing something, yeah. and they're found out on the internet, right? Yeah. It's found out. So you see, there's some guys walking around with backpacks looking shady, but somehow they you know they figured this out on the internet. They they kind of they, they figured out their plan or whatever. So these cops come up and arrest this guy before he does anything. Are they kidnapping that guy, or are they preventing that guy from 
you know, potentially so they know this guy has backpacks of explosives, and they're allowing them to walk out here? No, no, no. Why no, don't no. they stop him outside the door, and why are they waiting for them to come out here in public? Well, I'm sure that they're doing it as soon as possible. I mean, I... It seems like they always wait until the last minute until something happens, Why right? would they do that? There's, like, how many terrorists has the TSA... How many times How many they... terrorists has the TSA stopped? I don't fucking know. Zero. Zero. None. Oh, really? Are you yeah. sure about that? 100%. Oh, okay. All right. What about uh, all these people that get arrested no, at the no, airport no, with no, shoes no, in their bombs? No, with we, bombs we, in their shoes. We, we could talk about the security. And that, that was that was fun by a passenger, not by a TSA. Uh, so nobody's, so been, pa nobody's been stopped? Passengers, people stop terrorists. Like, TSA has never stopped anyone. Okay, nobody's been stopped with security with a bomb in their shoe? Because I'm pretty sure that's happened. Uh, people found that on the airplane, passengers. That wasn't security, though. Okay. Right? So I'm saying, like, security's not just something Nobody's been stopped trying to take a bomb into a public area? Um, I, 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 don't, I wouldn't know. I don't know. Do you know? Well, I'm pretty fucking positive. You're, you're, you're positive, but you don't have an example. So I, I don't want to speculate. I like to look for an example, right? Well, speculate either, well, let, but let's, let's go back to the, to the whole thing. I want to paint the brush, right, and how government's moral, and then I want to get to the questions and comments. I understand I, the government's moral. I agree well, with well, you. Well, I, we, we don't want to come to an agreement. Let me, I just want to finish the broad picture, and I think yeah. we come to a better understanding in which we're talking about security and law, because I want to talk about that stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. But let me finish painting uh, the entire picture, in which so you'll find that you can't really use government then for these things that we want. Right? So I'm just saying, like, if I were to smoke a plant, you may call it arrest, I may call it kidnapping. Um, I'm thrown into a cage, I may call it a cage, you may call it a prison, right? Uh, yeah, but any point sucks of, either way. Like, right, right. Any, way. Exactly. If I, were, if, if I were to still try to run away or escape because I don't agree with their government opinion that Canada's is bad for me, though, yeah. I would be met with more violence or sometimes shot, murdered, right, if I tried to escape or resist arrest. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Right? And at the yeah. same time, government has even found it to more violence because at no point can you say, I do want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. You have no freedom of economic choice. You still have to give government your exactly, money. Yeah, you still have to give up your property. That's where we agree. Right, we still have to pay your taxes. Because if you did have a freedom of economic choice and how best to spend your own money, okay. government would have threatened to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. So do you believe right? in no, like, no taxes at all? Yeah, we'll get through one second. So so this is then how, yes, uh, this is how then government is I don't war. understand, is this you interviewing people or is this you just trying no, to no, 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 talk like I said, about like, what you like, believe No, no, what I said is I'm going to ask you three questions, show you how government is immoral, and then ask what your questions and comments were. Okay. Right, but I can't get there until I finish the uh, the second part. Okay. All right, okay. so we're almost done. All right, so, but, so this is how government is immoral, and that this organization that calls itself the government then only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems, yeah. versus the, the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Yeah. And that was, that was the point I was trying to, to get through all that. I agree and with then, that. And, sure. and, and, and what, what are your thoughts about all, all that? I mean, I just, it's, it's convoluted. It's very convoluted because taxes are necessary to a certain extent. I don't know if you're saying that you disagree with taxes completely. Our society is not conditioned to be able to live that way. I mean, who, if we don't pay taxes, I was having this conversation with my girlfriend. Yeah. Why, she was, why do we pay our taxes? Well, the government uses that money to pay for our roads. Do you think that we're all going to come together and build roads? Do you think that we're all going to come together and police ourselves if, if we don't pay taxes? And I'm not a conservative. I'm not like a Republican. Neither am I. Yeah. I'm just saying it's, it's necessary for our standard of living to have taxes, to have a government that can take that money and put it to a positive use for things that can't be privatized. Sure, so, so let's discuss uh, two things there. Uh, in terms of taxation, right? Uh, is it voluntary or coercive? No, it's, 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 I mean, it's mandatory. Coercive then, right? What yeah. happens if you don't pay? You, they'll kick down your door and throw you into a cage, right? Wesley Snipes, three years in a cage, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, they will. Uh, or so, so we acknowledge first that it's not consensual, it's coercive. So no one really it's pays. It's not consensual, but it's kind of, I mean, you're kind of raised to, to know that. We are, right, a, right, right. I go through know, all these like, government schools I mean, and they tell me all the time that without, we won't have, that without government, something as difficult as putting concrete and asphalt on the floor would be difficult for anyone to do without them. It's like, you, when, I mean, you, you're raised to know that sales tax is just a necessary thing. You, they, they tell your us whole right, 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 right. Okay, but your whole life you go, you pay, right, you know, right. say a pack of gum costs 99 cents, you're paying a dollar ten for that. Right, right. I mean, okay. look at them, uh, they charge in New York City for that, right? Yeah, uh, okay. So, so but with roads, though, uh, what I'm trying to say, though, uh, government doesn't build roads, though, to begin with. Businesses do. Okay, the they contract. Does. They pay. Who, who do you think pays those businesses? Right, 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 to build right, right. They're politically connected. So, for example, no, no, no. I was the tax I'll, dollars. Right, 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 right. I, I take your money against their consent, and I gave it to my politically connected friends to build the roads. Businesses already do it. You don't have a say 
to say which businesses can do it. Exactly. You don't have, no, you don't. Which you That's should. That's the problem. Right, that is the problem. Right, but, right, right. But the American public is too dumb to make all those decisions on their own. And I'm not saying the government Why are you is saying much... people are too, are too stupid to know what to, how to spend their own money? Because it's fucking millions of people whose money needs to go to do a certain amount of things. If it was up to most people, what, what, what's done with the, the tax dollars, they with would just want it back in their own pocket. Beautiful, right? And if there's a market demand for roads, you know who builds roads all the time? Like, uh, go to Disney World, all those roads. Go to uh, a mall, the roads that they build there. Okay, the so do you have lot. a solution? Yeah, the, so, yeah so, so the solution is, uh, when we look at what is government then, the government, objectively, they have a monopoly on the services you and I want. Because they do yeah. want roads. I want okay, security. I'm not agreeing that it's not corrupt. It's definitely corrupt. Right, 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 right. But they have a monopoly in which you don't have the economic freedom to cancel or unsubscribe as you could from a real business service. Like Netflix, a couple years ago, tried to raise their prices overnight. People were like, forget that. Course, cancel, unsubscribe. No you could go somewhere else. You could go to Hulu, right? Yeah, when government does it, you can't go anywhere else. Okay, it would right? be amazing to privatize government, but it's not going to happen for a, for a while. No, it's, it, it's, it's, it's got to start somewhere, right? It, but it's not going to happen overnight. What are you going to start well, a revolution? Well, it, it starts... Uh, you can't do a non You can't do a how about, non how about an evolution? We, we, I, let me tell you something. Ahead. You can't do a non-violent revolution. Why? Because it's not going to work. I don't work. use violence in my life to to solve my problems. Why can't we? Most of everyone here don't either, right? Okay. Well, how many? I mean, what's what's going to change after today? I see all these people here that want to do good, but like. Well, then then we start creating a community here in Richmond that okay, is founded on okay. these principles that we share, right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, and you then can let, try. Us, let us grow from there over. Pe uh, people, people can people can live that belief for yes. one day, but they're going to go back to their normal lives on Monday, uh, and they're going to have to go back to their job, and sure, yeah, yeah. and they're going to have to conform. They're going to have to conform to societal norms. They're like no, but the, this stuff it doesn't last. What's up to to acknowledge the truth just, and call just it the side, it Yeah, it doesn't last. I mean, you got you have to live by the rules. Uh, I mean, I mean it's, it's nice to make those changes in your life, but yeah. in order to make these small incremental changes, yeah. in order to make them add up to a big change, yes, everybody has to do that and has to embody exactly. that and live yeah. that in yes. their daily lives. To be every day. Yes, yes, yeah, to live yeah. by our principles. And that's hard. To like, be moral. It is hard. It is because difficult. people are lazy. Because our society has created lazy. People, well, so, so interesting like, when you say our society, right? Most of society has gone through public indoctrination schools, right? Not only that, twelve not years, only, not, thousands not, of hours to they've produce. Not, they've not. What only he says, too stupid. They've been indoctrinated by the private sector more than they've been indoctrinated by the government. Look how much people are dependent on their cell phones. Like, look. I mean, look at the, look at the that time they that's send going, letters. Look at the look at the time that's going to waste, where people are just wasting hours of their day every single day on Facebook, seeing what other people are doing, rather than being productive or proactive to their own lives, or or even going out and trying to make some change in society. I mean, people people are conditioned to want that that instant stimulation that comes from Facebook or Instagram. Maybe it's or, a distraction from other stuff. Yeah, it's it's yeah, worse. I, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. worse than than taxes. Imagine all those all those hours. They could go to positive work if people weren't so sucked into their phones or their laptops or their TV. So, but, but let's, let's draw the distinction, though. I, I do agree there's a lot of time sucked up on Facebook and a lot of distractions out there and the media and all that stuff. I, I agree with all that. At least, at the very least, that's consensual, right? Uh, but the, you think it's consensual. The, the you areas, think it's consensual. But what taxes, though, are not consensual, right? So at least, but at least we, we, we look at the problem that we recognize and understand that it is coercive. And outside of that, yes, there's other things that maybe we can draw together as a community and have these conversations that we're okay, having about. Okay, but listen to me. Yeah. Okay, if we could overcome those taxes, if those taxes disappeared overnight and everybody could get 30% of their salary yeah, back into their pocket, them, yeah. back into their pocket, but, but all those other cell phones and all that were, were still existed, people would spend more money on goods and clothes and food and bullshit, okay? And it would, it would amount to nothing. But imagine if all those distractions were gone, but the taxes still existed, and people had five, six hours of a, a day to, to put into a productive, what, whatever they want to do productively, and those taxes still existed, that would go to much... Wait, 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 how, how, did, how, did, how did those distractions disappear? Uh, just imagine that hypothetically they disappear. I mean, how do those taxes could, could disappear? Could we also hypothetically, hypothetically imagine that disappearing when uh, taxes and government is gone? That's not going to disappear. If people have extra so, money, they're going to spend it on so, extra bullshit because the mindset, the mindset people, of America People love entertainment, wrong. enjoyment, and having a, love, a, a life. Every, the value people of, love to eat themselves to death that's and their, do that's, nothing. That's their own subjective. That's, the, that's what they value. What do you do with your life? What do you, what do you value? What do you yeah. pursue? I work. I have a girlfriend that I love. I, you know, I like, to enjoy, I like to work hard, and I like, to, in my free time, I like to invest in my free time to enjoy vacations, outdoor events, food, 
movies, blah blah blah, just things that the things that I can do that I enjoy, and I also enjoy investing in the future. I also yeah. enjoy investing money, saving money, and working on plans for the future. Right? That's do you have a I lot do. of friends that you feel that are kind of sucked into this lifestyle that you're discussing about? You're everybody, about? to a certain extent, even me, to a certain extent, everybody. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm not preaching to. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm another one of them. It's just. But it's kind of sickening the whole way that society has been taken over by entertainment because you're getting nothing out of that. There's no benefit from letting yourself get sucked into fucking Dancing with the Stars or Facebook or any of this bullshit. There's nothing positive that comes from that except for your own instant gratification, which is bullshit. I mean, one of the age-old adages is, is sacrifice your instant gratification for future benefit. And everybody has lost that has lost that over the years. Everybody just wants whatever's gonna make them happy now. Right. And they're sacrificing their future, which is why every I mean this, well, this society you know, I, is a I society think, of losers. I think we can kinda of go back to taxes. If government's gonna keep taking so much of my money, I'm not gonna have much left. Let me go ahead and spend it before government keeps taking more and more. Yeah, right? and that's a problem that we need to work on down the road. But the thing is, that's not something that will be solved overnight. You, I, in order to change the world, you need to change yourself first. Right, I'm not interested in changing the world, right? I, I oh, am. I, I am. Mean, let, the, let, the, let the people in those cities uh, figure out how to... Uh, you're worried about changing themselves. the nation or well, the I'm, state. I'm, I, can't, or I can't do that. For me, yeah, like you're saying, yeah, ourselves, you like right? To. Like ourselves, within our own interpersonal relationship, yeah. within our own community here in Richmond. The yeah. most we can do is put that spotlight up in the sky for other cities and other people to kind of follow yeah. our example. Yeah, right? but I think the best thing to do first is to, is to get yourself in the right place. I agree, I agree. Lead yeah. by example, Yeah. right? And then... And then you can start strategizing about what government should do. I don't know a goddamn thing about running people. I think honestly, Project, I think no one should do it. Honestly, I think it's a I think it's a lost cause. I think it's almost impossible to 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 rule or not you rule. Should, but, it is rule. Just it organize, is no, but organize or what? I just I, I think it's impossible. I think right. there's too many people. I think honestly, they should have had. You know how China does like the one child rule. Uh, which if you have another child, they'll kill it. Well, you can only have one child. You're only allowed. If you don't, if you have another child, they'll murder it. Well, I don't know what they do. Like, what do you think they do? They, I don't know. I think they snip your balls after you have one kid. <laughs> I, I don't fucking know. I don't live in China. But I'm just saying, if we would have done that a thousand years ago, yeah. I, I think all the problem we would be conditioned already to that, and then we would have none of these problems. I think all these Are problems think, rise from populate too much population. Too much pop Did you know? I don't you're think it's possible to govern this many people. I, I really don't. Well, right. So maybe it's not the overpopulation problem. Maybe it's just the government because no one should tell you what you can and cannot do with your body, or with your property, sure. or with your life. Right. So That's no true. one should be ruling over one another. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know so much that there's a population problem at all. There. Right. Because you could fit like the entire population of the world in the size of uh, I think like Australia or something. Okay, like that, but that's Texas. the reason. Yeah, but United States is lucky in that in that way. But you look at other places in the world. The, that are no, the entire population of the world, you could fit it in uh, in Texas. Okay, All you can fit them in there, but yeah. they, can they live there? You just build high. You go. You want to live like this for your whole life? You ever seen like, the movie like uh, Fifth Element? Yeah, they go straight up to the sky. Yeah, that's where we go. That's okay, where we go. That's ridiculous. Um, but I guess I want to say limit population. the populations of other animals. Why? Should, why is it so taboo to limit the population of humans? Uh, I, I guess you, you'll find like a, a, when government incentivizes you not to work, we'll give you money if you have. You more don't kids. think that most people that have kids, it's a bad idea for them to have a kid. I think uh, if they don't, they haven't saved, they don't have a good job, and if they're saying, oh, "Well, yeah. government's going to give me money if I have a kid," I think that is a bad idea. Yeah, it's a fucking terrible right? idea. Yeah, you're kind of enabling that sort of bad decisions, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but so I think removing government is requiring that it's creating more problems in that effect, right? Yeah. Um, and I kind of find it... I mean, it's very convoluted, man. I yeah. mean, there's no right answer. Really, there's no... Well, we just came to a right answer in the, saying I mean, that uh, I, no one should rule over one another. Let's just start with that, right? Yeah, but, but somebody has to lead, to right? We can, a, we, can, we can have leaders, right? People well, I mean, that, what's the, well, there's not, a fine line between a leader and a ruler. And, and a politician. A politician will tell you, yeah, a leader will say, hey... Dude, uh, politicians suck ass. Absolutely. Everybody knows. <laughs> what does this mean, by the way? Uh... This is bolt cutters, right? We're an actual community, yeah, right? Yeah, we yeah. want to take action. So who are you with? Are you with an organization? Yeah, Liberate RVA. Uh, yeah, liberate, liberate our city. I like you. You look like Thank a Black you. Panther, except you're a, <laughs> except you're not black. <laughs> uh, Latino, Bolivian. Oh, nice. Uh, so yeah, it's um, you fuckers killed Che. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we did. <laughs> I read. I have like a fucking three hundred page documentary or a biography on Che. Right. Nobody knows. People say, "Oh, he's a symbol of hope and freedom," but. They don't, they don't talk about how much he hated black people, how he murdered uh, gay people, how much he burned books. Uh, a lot of... There's a co big cost to a revolution. He did what he had to do. I mean, he murdered people he thought were, were, were traitors, basically. 
People didn't want to do anything with his ideas. I mean, they he, to he leave. conducted his own trials and stuff, and he murdered a lot of people that were tra that were traitors to his cause. So, right. So, again, but, if you disagree with my opinion, you also size me and walk away. That's also a different a part of the world, buddy. That's also fucking basically Vietnam. Like, you know. That he brought into people. Other people are murdering children there. Yeah, he, he brought it in. Himself. I mean, he, himself, he did murder a lot of people. He was, okay, like, Castro. He, was, he wasn't out there killing women and children. I mean, he was, he was doing there. what he thought he needed to do to, to, to take over, basically, because he thought his idea was After right. he took over, he did I mean, a I lot. I thought of, he was a really honorable dude, honestly. A lot, a lot of people, I, I kind of looked at him growing up, too, like, hey, this guy looks interesting because I see, like, like a lot of the yeah. shirts and stuff like that. Well, um, I mean, I read a lot about him. And just, right? My, my grandfather escaped from communist Cuba in a DOS cropper plane, yeah. sailing over the, the waters there, landing in Florida Keys uh, so to escape. You cigarettes, too. No, other kinds, cannabis, but, yeah, eventually. Maybe one of those. All oh, right. <laughs> But uh, the, the horrors and uh, the findings that he found there is what he escaped from that, right? The stuff that uh, Che tried to bring into Cuba and Castro himself. He, um, was a, he was a revolutionary. He was a... He was a murderous psychopath. No, that's not true. It's not true, man. Do your research. It's not I true. Did, I did my research, yes. I don't know. If uh, there's also uh, other interesting tales that he raped his maid when he was a young guy on the on the table in front of his friends. I mean, whatever you want to think is fine. You want to hear a tale that you read Him, on his, his old journal talking about how he found delight and just pulling the trigger off, off someone's head off. It's not true. It is true. His own writing, Dude, his own not, journal is writing. That's now. not true. I'm telling you. I've done way more research then after this let's just compare notes and uh see what uh what would you found and what i found and see what uh come back yeah. to this some other time talk about that yeah for sure All right but i think it's uh, either way either way you know what what you don't have to go off of exactly historically what you think is right even you can even go off like what your idea is of you, what you think somebody is that's almost even better even if, if you have like a inflated idea of somebody and you want to like say you have like an inflated idea of like Christopher Columbus, who was obviously a piece of shit. Say you have this this grandiose idea of him, you can use that for more benefit to yourself. Like you can you can you can look at him that way and and just take the good qualities and say I'm gonna live by these. Even though my, he might have been a piece of shit, that's you can still use that in a helpful way to yourself. I think all those good qualities you, know uh, you can find all over the place as well, yeah, and yeah, uh, you don't have to. Uh, when it comes to the same thing with like religion and stuff too. Sure, you can yeah, pull yeah. Out the I mean, there's pieces. always going to be uh, bad shit in a gold mine, right? Yeah, yeah that, that's very true. Uh, Columbus, so you though, I don't. Be a miner, right? You got to be a bad shit miner. <laughs> you got to build, right? Yeah. Hey, well, let me. Yeah, let's wrap up. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't meet Jim Cal. You got a business card or something? Yeah, let me. Uh, I got a flyer. Check us out, buddy. Go to like shows and shit. Yeah, yeah go to shows. shows. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You got a card? You got? I don't have my. Well, I do have my wallet. I don't have my email address on here, but you can text me. I'll give you my email address, and you can like put me on your list or something. Sounds I mean, good, I don't buddy. agree with all your shit, but well, like... well, it's a good discussion, man. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Taryn, pleasure, man. Good to meet you, Cal. <laughs> you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take Let care, man. Some cakes. Absolutely. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Amir and Melia. Thank you so much for believing in me and for helping me do what I do best, spreading anarchy. And hopefully one day I'll find myself across the Atlantic Ocean and Bosnia as well and spreading the message of freedom. So with that, thank you everyone for your support and patience for going through these videos, right? Uh, that was a fun one. I think his name was, uh, he gave me his card too, Taryn. So hopefully uh, we meet up again, Taryn, and continue our conversation. And with that, see you guys at the Virtue Party and stay liberated. Victim to the material world.